Welcome to HUD 241 um, Biostatistics in Public Health. I am Dr. Purvis and today we're going to <clears throat> go over what is research. So this is the first section in your Making Sense of Statistics uh, 7th edition textbook. If you don't have the textbook you need to get it. Um, please let me know if you don't have it and let me know when you get it in as well. So what is research? <clears throat> research involves coming to know something using a scientific method. A scientific method is a systematic way of acquiring knowledge. So the goal of research is to know by describing, predicting, and explaining situations involving human beings. We're going to focus only on um, studies that involve humans. We're not looking at any animal studies or anything like that. Um, we're going to focus only on humans. Research takes an empirical approach, a formal and systematic way of applying the scientific method to study a problem. So research, the way I've always thought about research is, research is when you have a question that you really want the answer to, but you're not really sure where to find it or how to find it. So that's when you use research. So let's go find out more. How do we come to know? So how do we actually like know what we know? A couple ways, through sensory. So think of sensory systems as observing using your sight, smell, taste, hearing, touch, you know, your five senses, okay? Um, that's how you would use sensory. But remember, sensory system is biased. It's not always reliable, you know? Think of taste. I might say um, this drink tastes great, and you might say it tastes nasty. So who's right? It's bias, right? It's an opinion. It's not a fact. Agreement. So agreement with others. First off, it's hard to find others that agree and to get a consensus, right? To get a majority. Um, but even when you do, just because I can find a group of people who all agree that fall is the best season, does that mean it's a fact? Or is it simply a bias based on who I ask? Maybe I know that I ask a bunch of football fans who are super excited for fall. They may say, yep, it's the best. Maybe I, if I ask a bunch of teachers who are off in the summer, they would say summer's the best. But I kind of maybe swayed it by who I ask, right? So therefore, just because you get others to agree doesn't mean it doesn't have bias. Okay, experts. You know, they sound great. They sound like someone you could trust, so by consulting an expert, they may still have personal bias though. Even experts are, are biased, so without um, statistics to back it up and without empirical research to back it up, it's usually still just their bias. Through logic. So think about logic. So I mean, here's an example. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C, mm -hmm, right? sounds logical but just because it's logical doesn't mean it's always correct okay um, it's logical for someone to wear sunscreen in the summer sun right that's logical we can probably all agree to that but maybe that's not logical because maybe they're allergic to sunscreen therefore it wouldn't be logical for them to wear sunscreen okay so all of this is why we use a scientific method when we're conducting research the five steps of the scientific method. A lot of you probably remember this from even high school biology. It's always the same. Um, you probably have learned this before. You're going to first recognize and identify a problem. Then you're going to formulate a hypothesis. Hypothesis being an educated guess, what you think the outcome is going to be. Determine the information needed and how to obtain it. That's your data collection. So how are you going to go about that? Um, and what do you actually need? That's important. So what information do you actually need in order to draw a conclusion? Four, organize the information obtained. So that's your data analysis. Five, interpret the results to draw the conclusions. Okay. Uh, research cycle, the cycle repeats again back to identify a problem based on what we already know, thereby increasing our knowledge over time. So the research cycle is the idea that you're going to continue to do research because maybe you found something in looking at this one problem that you identified in the beginning, as a result, you may have found something in the conclusions that you didn't expect and say, well, now I got to figure that out. So it just continues to go through the cycle. 
Uh, we're going to talk about two different types of research real quick. Quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative research uses numerical data to determine a cause and effect relationship. Qualitative uses verbal narrative data to describe how things are and what they mean. We are going to primarily focus in this class and really um, in your entire program here on quantitative research. However, both quantitative and qualitative are both very important to public health and both are used at various times within public health. We're going to talk a little bit more about this. Okay, so quantitative and qualitative types of research. So in your textbook on page two, it gives these two examples. Um, so you can kind of see the difference. So about students with ADHD, quantitative research, what are the differences in the number of discipline referrals between boys and girls with ADHD? Sorry. Qualitative research, what are the social experiences of students with ADHD? So your quantitative, you're looking at a specific number of discipline referrals. Your qualitative is looking more at your social experiences. So remember, qualitative is going to use words. Quantitative uses numbers. First generation college students, quantitative research, so what factors best predict first generation college students to successfully graduate? So you're looking at that prediction. That's a number. Qualitative, what challenges do first generation college students experience in their first year of college. So looking at that's more, um, you would have them do tell you things. They would tell you about what challenges there are um, and how that impacts their experience. Okay. Um, verbal narrative data in a qualitative research would provide in-depth information and is descriptive in its conclusions, but data analysis is extremely time consuming. Um, it, it is, it's interviews, it's focus groups, we're going to talk about some of this a little bit. Um, it's all those type things where it's a lot of words and you have to look at them and figure that out. Um, your numerical data <clears throat> that you get in quantitative research is much, much easier to analyze and it yields conclusive results. However, much of the in-depth information is lost in those numbers. So we don't know the why. So if we, um, if we say that using the example previously, if we said that um, boys had more discipline referrals compared with girls who both have ADHD, we would know that, but we wouldn't know the why. So that's kind of the difference. Qualitative, um, you might not necessarily know who has more, but you might know more of the why. So again, both of these categories of research are used for various purposes. Um, in public health research specifically. Okay, so if you're doing a research study, do not panic, you're not doing one of these for this class, but it's extremely important that you know how to do one. You do an introduction, that's your, introduces the general subject area. A literature review reviews what we already know in the subject. So what do we already know about the subject specifically? Your methodology, this is how you are going to do the study. Um, your procedures, your measurements, you know, who's your population, all of that. Um, results, this is where you display the statistical analysis. And then your discussion and conclusion, interpret what the statistical analysis show in answering the research question that began the study. So you would go back um, to the beginning and say, this is what we actually have found and this is what it means. Okay. Um, so moving forward with this class, we're going to learn statistical to tools to analyze and interpret the measures. So again, we're only going to focus on the quantitative. We are not focusing on qualitative. As with anything, there are limitations. Um, empirical approach to gain knowledge is limited in that it can't answer all the questions. So especially those of, um, think of things like those phys the I'm um, sorry, those feelings. You know, you can't get in touch into those you're just going to get the numbers. You're not going to get those emotions, the feelings, and all of that. The why, okay? What is measure cannot capture the full depth of the context, okay? So you're only getting parts of it. You can't kind of say, tell me more, or but why. The measuring measurement tools may be li limiting or an error. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about this in the course, but how can you limit error is going to be a big thing is also, also in research. So that is the end of what is research. Make sure you have read um, this section of the textbook 
and if you have any questions, please let me know.